Hey kids. Saturday night. Well, no. Sunday morning. <sighs> and I was thinking about making a little commentary on a chemtrails video and it kind of got me on a little research tangent. And then I was, as I was um, considering, you know, whether to make a video or not, I remembered the urge I had to make this one video. Sorry, it's, 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 I'm, I'm using my headlamp to light myself right now. Like a firecracker. Uh, I don't know. Um, the uh, clownfish eggs should hatch tomorrow. And uh, I don't want to turn on the lights in here to disturb the, uh, the, the mommy and daddy clownfish. I did get a, uh, a female pygmy bristletail file fish. I'm hoping to find a male and I'm going to try to spawn those two um, in the 29 gallon. Still haven't located a female uh, mandarin but the the pod population is definitely blooming because I've been you know dosing Fido almost daily to the tank and um dosing it into the middle of the vortex where the seaweed is so a brackish water you know like the, the lighter salinity water will stay afloat in you know ideal conditions you know like you know as long as there's not too much mixing current um and in the middle of that seaweed it's 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 kind of isolated enough to where it stays for a good long while it seems to me, based on the just copious amounts of pods, man. P copious amounts of pods. I just farted. I hope that didn't show up on camera. Sorry if it did. Just deal with it. I'm, I'm going to move on. You're not the one that has to smell it. I don't really have to breathe, but I'm smoking a cigarette, so... <laughs> I will endure. Anyway, speaking of weird things about me, kind of brings me to the point of why I feel compelled to make this video. And um, let me go ahead and just say this. If anybody has any questions that you don't think anybody could answer, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Just saying. And that's one of two arrogant statements I'll make on this video. The other one I did plan out before I made this, but let's see if I can beat around the proper bush to it. Um, you know, the 20 seconds or five minutes, however long I spaced out in my head before I, rehearsing in my head before I made the video, you know. Uh, I'm sure people have realized by now I don't I don't do the whole script thing not 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 my deal um looking at a cigarette Ooh, look at the pretty cigarette oh fascinating I know oh. <laughs> So, question was posed, I forget what channel, I don't think I could pronounce it if I tried, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, he's a Christian flat earther, and, ha. Huh.
let's just say those who try to be a shepherd without learning how to wield a staff wind up leading their sheep astray. And this person, he tried. But he didn't give a satisfactory answer. I'm pretty sure of it. It's just kind of the generic, you know, don't complain about suffering because you're lucky to exist. And thank God for every moment of your existence. And existence is beautiful. And yeah. The question he got, obviously was, or not obviously, but, I don't know, would it be obviously at that point? Uh, sorry, it's late, I'm tired, and I ran out of thinking sticks, so I gotta light another one, um, the question, obviously, was, <laughs> No, that, that wasn't a question. That, that Alex Trebek would be pissed, okay? Um, I don't fucking care. The question was, why does God allow suffering, specifically childhood cancer? I think it was a specific type of cancer, but, you know, childhood cancer fucked up enough, right? Well, you see, the way it's asked is as if God causes it. See, God allows free will. But God does not cause suffering. There's a difference. And the person that answered the question did make a good point about God being willing to suffer with you. Okay, God isn't on some lofty pedestal the way proponents of a false god would have you perceive God to be. The Christian God is a God who walks the same life you do and will suffer the same limitations you do to be a proper parent to you. But the greater point that I wanted to make is that God does not cause suffering. Man causes suffering. Man causes suffering to himself and to each other. Cancer, disease, plague, famine, all of these things, natural disasters even, they're not God's fault. They're results of poor hygiene, poor planning, poor preparation, poor quarantine procedures, poor nutrition. Releasing electronic technologies before they've been tested, releasing medications before they've been tested, releasing medications into the water supply. Incest. Yeah. Lots of different curses mankind has inflicted upon himself that has degraded the health of their offspring, that has degraded the quality of life in general from what the kingdom of God had established. See, Mankind, and I think every one of you know this to be true, mankind as a whole has voted out God's rule. And God loves you. And God's not worried about losing control in the greater scheme of things. So you want to be on your own for a while? How would a parent do? Hmm? Well, that's what happened, kids. 
You've been on your own for a while. And this is what you've done to yourself. Now, back to my second arrogant statement. Or on to my second arrogant statement. I don't suffer any health problems. I, I suffer, you know, like, injury problems, you know. But I don't, you know, I have a good eyesight, good sense of smell, good hearing. Praise God, I'm in good health because I have good hygiene. I take care of myself. I make sure I receive a balanced diet. I try to affect proper sanitary and quarantine procedures in general in this house. You know, with different types of meat, we have different levels of carefulness. We, you know, just, I'm not likely to get any disease because I'm smart about shit. And my kids aren't likely to get any disease because I'm not raising them around some big fucking power lines and I'm not letting them sleep with electronic devices near their heads and I'm not microwaving shit and giving it to them. You know, like there's a lot of different things you can do to keep yourself in health. Okay. And like I hear a lot of bad things happen to a lot of people and a lot of people's families. That stuff didn't really happen to my family much because my family had a strong tradition of teaching how to do things, how to live properly, you know? And there's a lot of families like that. And for those of you who aren't from families like that, nodding your heads like, yeah, okay, you're probably right now saying this... You're going to get fucking sick just for saying that. I hope you fucking catch a fucking disease. And sh you arrogant prick. Right? Well, you just proved my point 100% that mankind f inflicts its illnesses upon itself and each other. Thank you. Have a nice day. Please drive to the second window. <laughs> number two because you're kind of shit out of luck yeah uh, well so I got out of that and got all that out in 13 minutes how about that cool got a little clock timer on my video camera because you know I gotta tell y'all about the fucking technology y'all get better than I do probably Used to be an IT guy, woke up to my previous life, so now I'm like impressed that fucking like like okay. I was looking at I was looking at nineteen seventy two and I'll, I'll I'll get to why in a second. I was looking at nineteen seventy two on Wikipedia. Just nineteen seventy two. What the fuck happened in nineteen seventy two? And I saw the first Pong arcade game. And I'm just like totally in that moment of wow that's a really that's like space age like freaking technology advancement there okay it's 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 probably laughable to most people but that to me seems like a big thing and we haven't moved much on from that to me okay to where we were in 1972 looking at that looking at that big arcade screen looking at our black and white TVs and shit okay and Apollo 17 the last the last lunar mission right So you see, I was watching this thing on chemtrails, on how stuff works, and it's, it's very interesting. They they go through some stuff in a very quick roundabout, not very forthright way, um, but 
I would say these cats are probably convinced of whatever they talk about. They try to be as skeptical as they feel the need to be, but, you know, there's some things that they're, you know, convinced of. And, um... The idea that we would just do fucked up experiments on our own people, for instance. I used to, you know, think that, you know, Cold War stuff, people were just heartless and there was no actual, you know, reason or rhyme to it. They just, you know, think of people as fucking numbers when it comes to shit like that. And I can see why people would develop that opinion. I used to have that opinion, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not calling anybody stupid for thinking that. I'm just telling you that it's wrong. And this particular thing I'm, th I'm looking at is um, the Army's secret Cold War experiments on St. Louis, Louis. Okay, this is just published by How Stuff Works. Okay, and that's the that's a building that they tore down because of the radium poisoning, apparently, that was going on there. And I couldn't find specifically why this neighborhood was targeted for radioisotope tracking, but there was a very large like conglomeratization of communist and black panther movements in these areas at the time and now it's reported as the government was purposely targeting minority and lower income areas well yeah they just happen to be areas that had been infested by this Islamo-communist, fascist, fucking anti-American rebellion, basically. And where? St. Louis? Hmm. Interesting. I wish both sides of this issue would stop falling into the traps set for them. Because it's just a damn shame. It's just a damn shame to see white people and black people who are very often, and this, this, this is the tragedy that goes completely unspoken of, that, that I need to speak of, okay? Very often, when some black people attack a white person for being in the neighborhood, or when a black when a white cop shoots a black person when they didn't need to shoot him, okay, both of those people are Christians, and the Satanists who cause the division between us are laughing. That family that cries for those people that die. They're Christians. The people who egg it on from both sides, they're not. Gather some data. You'll find it to be the case. <sighs> That's what I do. Johnny Five is alive. And he likes input, input, input. I <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> uh, seem to be getting far too much oxygen. I'm going to have to light another thinking stick. So, I would, 
I, I would like to recommend that people watch this. Kim Trails experimenting on the public. Okay, this is how stuff works. All right. These cats got some interesting stuff. It's a good place to get a little bit of a step back from most conspiracy theories. Although, they don't take a far enough step back, in my opinion, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing a rebuttal. But you see, after you get done, sorry, you know, fucking crappy lighting night. Yeah. Um, fucking forehead lines out of control. Younger and more bald, older and scruffier. Younger, older, younger, older. MySpace selfie. Creepy flashlight story. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> okay. Uh, ah! Sh stupid guy with a camera. Okay. Ow! Ow. Jesus fucking shit. Cunt. Deer. Lawnmower. Okay. Crisis averted. Yeah. <sighs> So anyway, um, see, I don't get distracted easily. Was that a squirrel? Huh? No. So after you go and watch on how stuff works, chemtrails experimenting on the public. And, um, well, first, if you got any questions, seriously, put them in the comments. I'm going to, uh, make a point of keeping up with and going back and looking at this video, checking, see if anybody left questions. If I miss one, I'm sure Joey and Emily will remind me. Those are my two volunteer helpers that I kind of met through the channel. <laughs> been quite a blessing um but then go to wikipedia and this this happened right here this, this is 1972 1972 was a hell of a year a very interesting year I uh I can't even list all of the monumental shit that happened in 1972 because you know that I, I don't think this technology does that it might but I don't I don't I don't know how um yeah but you had the war in Vietnam was escalating. The there were terrorist attacks. There was uh, people burned alive. There was, you know, the, Iran was flaring up. Libya was flaring up. Sudan was flaring up. All these places that we hear about now flaring up. Pakistan became a country. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> a lot of very big significant like Pakistan's like I'm gonna be a country now oh yeah and we want nukes in 1972 um yeah it's just from memory from when I was scrolling down just now um One thing I wanted to talk about that I found interesting, because I, I, I learned me something, you know, kind of recuperating from my immediate judgment phase 
you know, back when I allowed my opinions to get propagandized, you know, like humans do. Um, the Christmas bombings. Warning, just to me, myself, personally, just, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted that I'm about to speak in defense of Richard Nixon. But yeah, it's about to happen. Um, okay, so the Christmas bombing in 1972, where during December 18th to December 29th, I think it was, we had B-52s doing heavy bombing in North Vietnam, right? Well, Kissinger had this plan for peace, um, and the North Vietnamese wouldn't come to the negotiating table, and basically a new Congress was about to stop the war, okay? And, you know, whether you agree with that sentiment or not, okay. The, you know, popular uprising at the time was brought about by a kind of a media frenzy, okay? And that was trying to usurp the authority of the commander-in-chief during a time of war, okay? And the fact is, the North Vietnamese wouldn't come to the negotiating table and were basically in indirect collusion with the soon-to-be-elected, you know, um, vote-swinging or decision swinging representatives uh, I didn't look at the specifics as far as senators and congressmen individually or whatever it doesn't fucking matter but you know what I'm saying these guys saying we're going to stop the war so the North Vietnamese said, oh we're going to wait on those nice guys to stop the war for us and Richard Dixon you couldn't get them to the negotiating table to, to get a reasonable stop to the war, okay? And didn't want Congress to just stop the war because of liberal guilt. Said, huh, you don't want to negotiate to stop the war? Got some fucking B-52s that I think can stop the war real quick. And it happened to be towards the end of the year. It wasn't like purposely we did it on Christmas to catch them off guard or anything. Which is, you know, what I immediately thought. What I'm sure a lot of people immediately think when you hear the Christmas bombings. Really? We did that shit? You're not supposed to go and bomb people on Christmas. What, did they really need to take advantage of and really surprise them, you know? Oh, they wouldn't bomb us on Christmas. Ha ha, fuckers, we don't care. Ah, we're evil America. Oh, oh, I'm sure a lot of people thought that. No, no. It was a big fucking political squeeze. And I'm not a crook. Had his balls pinned to the wall, man. Yeah, in more ways than one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying anything about that fucking war was right. But to blanketly say our involvement was wrong is just not looking into it enough.
did you know that like Christians get mass murdered a lot? Doesn't happen here. I, I you know often. I mean, it does, but like th there's there's a lot of things that you have to know that they happen before you can go and judge any event internationally and, and hope to really have an understanding of it. Especially enough of an understanding of it to hate your own government. Okay? Because anything that kind of blanketly presents evidence that conclusively, you know, U.S. government bad, U.S. Army bad, CIA bad, anything that leads straight down that path is going to be incomplete information at best. And I suggest people just take a step back and realize that there are a lot greater greater there's there's cats in the cradle and, and a silver spoon and and little boy blue and bubbles is back in town yeah he's looking for him it's like two different comedian's jokes and if you didn't see both of those performances that's not funny so I'm going to move on uh, blah 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 she ran out of thinking stick lost my train of thought I know I'm horrible I'm horrible but anyway you know, before you fucking just go I hate America Realize that there are greater evils, greater evils, great old, greater, greater evils here. That's, that's English, right? Motherfucker, do you speak it? Uh, greater evils in this world than what it takes to defend yourself. Understand? When you prepare to defend yourself, you have to do some kind of fucked up shit. When you are defending yourself, you have to do very often some very fucked up shit. I'm not saying it's not fucked up shit. I'm just saying that take a step back from pointing the finger at your brothers, your fellow humans, and realize they did what they thought and felt they had to do at the time to protect you. Because that's the truth of it. That all these liars don't want you to get to. That's what they just want you to ignore completely. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up before I uh, space out and talk some nonsense and repeat myself again. Yeah. God forbid. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe, scratch that, reverse it, peace.